Jill, who's going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the apps that, that we've been that we've worked with her on. Thank you, Jeff. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, it, it's been a about three years or so since we started this process, and one of the reasons that I had worked with Jeff was because he did have some experience and knowledge of agriculture, and he had worked with. Um, He'd worked with the University of Nebraska, and so he had an understanding of kind of some of the bureaucracy that might be involved, and it worked out really well. I mean, I thought there was great communication, and that's a real key point here. So a couple of the, the apps that we developed, well, one is why develop apps? And I think one of the main reasons, and I think you'll hear this from some of the others on this presentation as well, was that record keeping and doing some of these operations or calculations you need can be for some if people have to drag clipboards or try to just do things on the back of an envelope. And what you're finding is that people pretty much always have their smartphone with them. And so if they can do that on their phone or on a device that they've got in their hands all the time, hopefully you're increasing the integrity of those records and, and the likelihood that accurate records or accurate calculations are, are being made. And by having it in an electronic form, hopefully you're reducing the workload for the farmer or the, the farm employee um, as far as data entry or, or getting it integrated with their, their record keeping system. And so we were really curious to see if an app, um, because when we started this, there really were no manure management apps. And I was really glad to see some of the other folks that are on this webinar um, had kind of started along this path the same time we did. Um, and, and so the idea of can this really be a viable way to, uh, to help improve the nutrient management or manure management practices? Can it be a good way to, to help improve the ease of record keeping for farmers was a question that I was really curious to see if, if we could answer. And the first app that we have is called the Manure Calculator. And up in the, the handout pod, which is right next to the, the yellow sticky note pod up there, you'll see that Leslie has several documents uploaded there. And, and one of them is a, uh, is a document that has the links. It says Manure Apps Info. It has all the links to all the apps we're going to talk about today. So you don't have to worry about trying to capture um, websites or anything like that from here. Just get that. Uh, document that Leslie has up there, and it'll have all the information for you. And with the Manure Calculator app that we have, it's um, both Apple and Android, and it has three parts. Part one was to actually look at calibration, how much manure was applied. And so when you, and I apologize, we, we looked high and low to try to find a way to demonstrate our app directly in Adobe Connect. And amazingly enough, there's not such a way to do that. So if anybody wants to make an app to do that, you would be more than welcome to do so. <laughs> but anyway, um, the manure calculator, when you open it, you can see the three pieces of the app that we have currently. And it's undergoing a, an update right now. We've got a couple of other teams, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But the calibrate section is how much manure was spread or how much manure was actually put out. And you can see there's some different screens here where you actually can decide whether it's, uh, was it done through a, a spreader? Is it done through irrigation? Do you know the capacity of the spreader? If you do, you get to enter that data. If you don't, it takes you through a couple of different options to calibrate um, the old plastic sheet method or using scales. And if you, and you can select the, the the type of manure that you're going to be applying as well in there. And you can see if you know the spreader capacity, on the left there you get to select that. On the right it takes you through the, the uh, calibration method and the screenshot that I chose there was the, the plastic sheet method that many of you are probably very familiar with. It also lets you keep several different fields stored in the app so you can um, tell it how large the field was and give it a name. And after you've entered your data as far as the, uh, the size of the spreader, it'll give you an, 
a reading on the size of the spreader, you know, how far it took before it emptied, you know, whatever you've learned from the, the calibration portion here, it kicks back a number for you that says this is how many tons per acre were applied to that field. Okay, that's a good number to have. What do you do with that? And here you have the, the screen where you can, you can choose to save that in the app. You can email it to yourself. It comes as an, an Excel file, so it can be, um, you can eventually bring all those together into a single Excel file and keep track of that. Um, you can see at the bottom there, you can enter weather conditions. That can be an important piece of the records for a manure application, especially if you're a permitted farm. And so, like I said, you can choose to save that in the app. You can email it and have a backup copy away from your device so that you have a, a record of that application that you can use um, for your nutrient planning or manure planning and your records. So then the next step after you've gotten a number back from the app on how much manure was out there, the next question is obviously how many nutrients went out. And the app will give you the option to do either uh, your own manure test or you can use some book values which are in there. And the, the book values that are in there are based on the ASABE standards. We are working on an update that will um, be a bit more state specific. Um, and that's a large undertaking, but it should be done here in the next couple of months, I would think. Anyway, as you enter on the left, you can see an example of what you would enter if you have your own uh, manure test. And on the right, you'd see if you were looking for, um, to use the book values, you would scroll through the solid or liquid sources and, and select which type of manure you were applying. And then it would, the app would use the background numbers that it has stored in there. And once you've selected your manure and, and gotten a nutrient content of it, you can look and this is an example of all the different calibrations that I saved in the app. And I would select which one of those applies to the, the manure test or, the, or today's um, nutrient value that I was putting out there. And so if I selected maybe the, the 10 tons per acre is what the calibration said, we would continue on and it would tell me that the, not all the nitrogen is going to be available in year one. And just based on timelines in the original app development, that's where we had to end is that we couldn't, we just had to say there's this much nitrogen in it and recognize that it's not going to all be available in year one. Many of you know that's a very state specific, um, geographic specific calculation. Um, the update that we're doing right now is actually going to add that piece of it where we can use um, state values as far as 30% of that nitrogen is available in year one, blank percent in year two, six, seven percent year three. And so we are going to go further than that. But for now, in the original app, this is where it had to, uh, we had to put an end to it just because of timelines and, and the complexity of moving on to that next step. But in the original, here is what that report would look like. And obviously it's going to change with this new update with the, the nitrogen um, having a different, this area here, the nitrogen will not just be a single number now, it'll be broken down into year one, year two, year three. Um, possibly year four if we have enough of that, but we will we'll have to see how the spreadsheet comes out. Anyway, you get that report as far as how much, uh, how many nutrients were put out when you spread the manure. And again, some of the updates we're working on is the organic nitrogen availability, more state-specific values in that. Um, we're, we're really fortunate to have two groups that are, are working with us on this who have a great deal of expertise on these next steps that we're putting in, and one's the Nebraska Manure Management Group and a group up in Alberta, Canada. And one of the things that would make this app useful for Canadian farmers is uh, metric units. And so we're, we're adding the metrics, and that's one of the things that Jeff mentioned was as far as market, we didn't originally um, 
know if this would be useful for folks up north, but it looks like it does have some value, and so the, the metrics are being put in. And then a new entry point is going to be added where you actually start with a fertilizer recommendation from your co-op or agronomist. And currently this app is um, 99 cents in the store, and we're going to change that so that they're free. And you'll hear more about that in the round table as far as some of the decision making behind that. And then the last piece of the manure calculator is where you can actually get a sense of what is this manure worth as far as its fertilizer value. And so you can select one of the, the calibrations that you saved in the app. You can just use a um, average cost that we, we update a spreadsheet every few months and the app reads that spreadsheet and, and uses those numbers. Or most people are pretty well aware of their local costs and will probably use their actual costs for the app. And then you can get a report um, as far as what was that manure worth. And then in this app, basically the assumption is that all of the nutrients had value. And we know that isn't always the case, especially in areas where phosphorus might be um, in excess in some areas, and so maybe not all the phosphorus is worth anything, but for right now, this app has that, um, that assumption built into it. And then the second app that we worked on is a record-keeping app, and it's the Manure Monitor. And you can set up a farm, and it has a, an emergency action plan. And this was developed so that anybody who's part of the farm could actually sync. You could update this action plan, and anybody that's part of that same iTunes account can sync to this, and then they would have the updated plan right on their phone or device, tablet, whatever happens to be with them. And so if you can enter, you can see there's three options here for an, a liquid manure plan, a solid manure plan, and if there's like a catastrophic mortality event. Those were the three emergency plans that we, we put into here that can um, sync. And this is just an example of some data I put in for a, uh, a liquid manure emergency plan as far as what sorts of equipment. Right now, the default phone number would be 911, um, largely because most manure spills are related to roadway accidents with trucks carrying manure. But certainly, where a manure storage fails, um, that's an option as well. Um, maybe that isn't the first phone number you would want on there. You would keep um, rainfall records in here. A lot of um, permitted operations need to do that. And so you can enter um, rainfall events. And then I'm not going to go through each of the individual pieces here, but you can also keep records on um, equipment maintenance. So if you have several manure spreaders or you have pumps or, or uh, drag lines, whatever, anything that you do as far as maintenance needs to be kept. In far, as far as a record-keeping perspective for permitted operations and can be a good idea for even non-permitted operations if you um, might need to worry about um, liability or just being able to prove you're doing the right thing as much as possible. Uh, animal mortality records, water line inspections, inspecting the manure storage, and if you sell any manure or give away manure to somebody off the farm, this app has those records in there as well. And so uh, my contact information is on the webcast flyer. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions on that. 